The Moscow Popular Science Film Studio presents The Atomic Flagship. Scenario by Boris Agapov. Directed by Dmitry Bogolepov. Consultants, Burkhanov and Kudinov. Cameraman, Dmitry Gasyuk. Animated drawings by Virulin. Music by Ziv. Sound by Alexei Marshistov. scientist Mendeleev once said that the northern coast was our country's facade, but it's a facade that faces a cheerless, frigid wilderness. The Arctic is reluctant to surrender itself to man. rigorous region, which until recently had been a barren waste, is now bubbling with life. More and more new towns, factories and mines are coming into being along the Soviet Union's northern seaboard. The natural resources there are incalculable. The main route to the resources beyond the Arctic Circle is the Great Northern Seaway. It's a tough job for Soviet icebreakers to clear a lane for a caravan of vessels through the ice of the Arctic Ocean. It had long been the dream of Arctic navigators to have an icebreaker with an unlimited reserve of power. So Soviet workers, scientists and engineers built the atomic icebreaker Lenin, the largest and most powerful icebreaker in the world. Its length is 134 meters. And all the fuel it needs is 15 grams a day. Many scientific institutions helped with the designing of the icebreaker. For example, researchers of the Arctic and Antarctic Institute investigated the resistance the future ship would encounter from ice of varying thickness and firmness. Model tests showed that the ship would have sufficient power to break its way right through an ice field two meters thick. The construction of the unusual vessel was assigned to the workers and engineers of the Admiralty Shipyard in Leningrad. In the autumn of 1959, the world's first atomic icebreaker was completed. Here it stands at the shipyard's moorage. The last shift of builders goes on board. Let's follow them and go through the ship. The ship's atomic heart lies beneath a reliable shield. The reactors are being charged with nuclear fuel. The metal tube channels contain uranium. But why is it that the men work so calmly, without fear of the extremely dangerous material? It's because there is no nuclear reaction at this moment. Let's look inside the reactor. It's a cylinder of very thick steel covered with an equally thick lid. Here and here are water holes. The nuclear fuel channels are lowered into the reactor.
there must be a definite mass of uranium in the reactor, or as they say, a critical mass. Otherwise, nuclear reaction cannot originate. The crucial moment is nearing, as the last fuel channel is lowered. Instruments trace the invisible processes in the uranium mass. Errors are inadmissible and therefore excluded. The mass of uranium in the reactor is reaching the critical point. charge of uranium. Does that mean that the reaction has started? No, not yet. The fact is that these rods, which quench reaction completely, had also been plunged inside between the fuel channels. Moreover, in a reactor of this type, water is needed for the splitting of the uranium atoms. These men are about to get under the reactor to open the water feed. is running now. Anyone coming out of the zone of possible radiation must necessarily wash off the least trace of radioactivity. shows total absence of radioactivity. The reactor is ready to go into operation. The terrific force of the atom is waiting submissively for the command to start turning the propellers of the peaceful icebreaker. In order to obtain heat, the control rods must be raised so that they would not quench the reaction. The reaction has started. The water, heated to 320 degrees centigrade, rushes into the steam generator. The steam generator is a strong steel boiler. Inside, a hot water coil runs from the reactor through the steam generator, which heats the water in the boiler and turns it into steam. Having given off its heat, the water from the coil goes back into the reactor. Three reactors and steam generators are isolated from all other parts of the ship by massive protective walls. This is the safe in which stored atomic energy operates. From the steam generators, the steam goes on to the turbines. The turbine room of the Lenin icebreaker. Here, each steam turbine is coupled to an electric generator. The turbo generator units all operate independently. So if one or even two of them stop working, this will not hamper the ship from continuing its voyage. Reliability is an indispensable quality of the atomic icebreaker. It has a spare turbine and a diesel generator of 1,000 kilowatt capacity. current produced by the electric generators runs the ship's main electric motors. The electric motors rotate the icebreaker's screw shafts. The 
underwater ends of the shafts are fitted with three enormous screw propellers. The steel blades are evolved by 44,000 horsepower. Never before has there ever been such a mighty ship in the Arctic seas. This has been called the control room of energy and vitality. The instruments and devices installed here show the condition and operation of the ship's entire power system. From here, you can manipulate the control rods in the reactor and thereby regulate the quantity of heat evolved. On this panel, you can watch the work of all the electric machines the generators and motors. The ship has another automatic control post. This is where the condition of the air is checked in all of the icebreakers 900 rooms, holds and cabins. In this small container is a source of radiation. Its radioactivity is just slightly stronger than that of a luminescent watch. An alarm. And at once, a signal in the radiation hazard center. The place and magnitude of radiation are registered immediately on the control panel. Reliable precautions are taken on the icebreaker to exclude the possibility of any harmful radioactivity. The wheelhouse. Every provision has been made for the pilot's convenience, from the round observation window to the most up-to-date signalization system. Full speed ahead. It's a test of the control system. The signal has been received. The electric motor is ready to pick up speed. The strongest man on earth could not have budged the ship's rudder, which weighs around 30 tons. But a slight movement of the hand and a powerful machine swerves the rudder to the right or the left. The icebreaker's radio eye can see through darkness and fog. Its radar detector is adjusted to both close and distant range. The radio cabin is the ship's ear and voice. The atomic icebreaker is a refuge for all in need of help in the icy wilderness. On no matter on what frequency and from what distance an SOS signal may be transmitted, this device will pick it up immediately. It is self-adjusting and indicates the exact point in the ocean where urgent help is needed. The Lenin is an icebreaker that can cruise not only far but also for a very long time. Its crew and staff will spend many months at a stretch in the cold silence of the Arctic. So let them feel as cozy and comfortable as at home. The builders of the icebreaker are the first to fumigate the smoking lounge. Today they have an important matter to discuss, the ship's forthcoming maiden voyage. Berth Seaman's Cabin.
junior officers have single berth cabins. This is a room for an officer of middle rank. The time has come to occupy the room. of the icebreaker, Pavel Ponomaryov, has been living aboard the ship for many a day. He has been known as a strict master and a seasoned sailor from the days when he captained the icebreakers Yermak and Krasin. Tomorrow, the atomic icebreaker will leave the shipyard. Tomorrow is the day for the ship's ceremonial welcome in Leningrad. very same place from which the cruiser Aurora fired the historic volley in 1917, heralding Russia's freedom, stands the wonder ship built by the people for the good of their homeland. Everyone wanted to see the icebreaker. The captain and the crew cordially welcomed the guests. delighted in their creation until late in the evening. The next morning, the icebreaker was out at sea. For the first few hours, the ship was towed by a powerful tugboat. Its machines were still inactive and the water astern didn't foam. Then came the order, make ready for the voyage. The man at the power controls is the distinguished Soviet scientist, academician Alexandrov. A few seconds are enough to put the reactors into working condition. Free and wide are the sea routes. A memorable moment. The peace ship, driven by the power of the atom, is about to start its cruise of the high seas. The control panel of the electric system indicates that the motors are ready for the service load. The screw shaft is revolving and waves begin to swell a stand. The 
dream of many generations of polar seamen has at last come true. They now have a titanic icebreaker which can go any distance and has no fear of any ice packs. The illustrious name of Lenin shines on the prow of the first atomic ship in the world.